uh, I like to thank the grace of heaven, the, verse, the virtues of the masters, and the compassion and mercy of the grand predecessor, predecessors, senior transmitters, transmitters, lecturers, temple masters, and everyone for giving me this opportunity today to talk about <clears throat> today's topic, which is <clears throat> chapter 51 of the uh, Tao Te Ching, or the classic of the way and the virtue. Okay, the title of this uh, chapter is called Respect and Value. Okay, Respect and Value. It's very important. All right, it's divided into four sections. Yeah, four sections. So it's, um, it's short. I mean, well, it's not short. It's, med it's a little slightly above average length. But anyway, um, okay. So let's, it's... First section talk is uh, he's uh, laying out his, I guess say his proposal or his theory or his thesis. And then sections two and three is his, his analysis. Okay, so that's two and three, that's lines five through 14. And then the conclusion, and this is very important, is conclusion, okay? Especially lines 15 through 17, okay? All right, okay, so let's go to the outline. Okay, all right, first sentence or line is, the Tao produces them, virtue raises them, things shape them, forces perfect them, okay? So that's his thesis, all right? So basic meaning, of the first phrase, Tao produces them. On the universal level, the Tao gives birth to the mirror things, okay? Uh, another meaning <clears throat> is that the ancient sages knew that all living things were born from parents, right? I mean, you know, the sages, I mean, I mean, I mean that, that, the living things, okay? Living things, okay? All right, were born from that. So they knew that if they extrapolated back in time to the very beginning, there must be a source However, in the Tao tradition, they did not presume a creator deity, okay? You know, Lao Tzu did not specifically say God, okay? Even though you could substitute the word Tao for God, you could do that, okay? So the ancient sages also could see that the world is teeming with life, and it seems to be the way, quote unquote, okay? That's just the way it is, you know, that similar to the Buddhism of suchness, thusness, okay, idea, okay, the way of existence to give rise to life. So as a label of convenience, they call this ultimate source of all life, the Tao. Yeah, so, so that's why the Tao has many meanings, right? Many layers of meanings, right? Many levels. Okay, all right. So this is one level saying that, you know, yeah, the Tao is the ultimate source of everything, okay? Not just life, but everything. All right, all right, okay. Um, so this way of the world or the Tao allows for the profusion of life, okay? Yeah, because it gives rise. It, 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 it seems to be the way it is. It's nature just to, you know, create life, okay? Give life, okay? Or give rise to living things, mere things. So the term Tao, quote unquote, was not derived from some mythological legend, not from some religious tradition, but just to say that it seems to be the way you know, just the way it is, okay? So it is with nature to give rise to life, to create the profusion of life. To, so today we may say, you know, the natural laws of biology, for example, from a scientific perspective. So instead of the Tao, you know, that's, you know, it seems that there's some natural laws of biology that allows life to, you know, happen, to, to arise, okay, in this world, all right? So deep understanding is, all living things follow natural laws, which include the working of evolution, survival of those that can most readily adapt to ever-changing environmental conditions, etc. Okay, so that's that's you can say that's biology, right? So, so those that are mindful of the natural laws will survive, while those that don't will perish, right? So that's the nature of things. Okay, so. Humans are no different in that we also follow natural laws, but humans are different from animals in that we have to mind karmic laws as well. So if we do, we get karmic rewards. If we don't, we end up with karmic retribution, okay? So humans fall under the laws of biology also, right? You know, 
the whole creation, the way we adapt, we change, we grow, we change, we adapt, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But we also have to, so that's the physical side, but then there's a, you know, spiritual side, which is the laws of karma. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Um, the higher understanding at the human level, the Tao being the ultimate source of all living things is our Buddha nature essence. Okay. So that's the first phrase. Second phrase, basic meaning. Um, basic meaning is that the, uh, a basic uh, second phrase, meaning of second phrase is virtue raises them is, okay. Virtue in this context means the inherent power in everything or by virtue of the Tao. So if the Tao manifests as the natural laws of biology, then virtue would be the life force, the innate power, inherent power, innate power that lets living things grow everywhere. Okay, so this is the internal aspect of virtue that we're talking about, okay? Um, so when we say virtue raises them, okay? So, uh, so it's some innate that when the Tao create or give gave rise to all living things. Within these living things, there's some innate, we say virtue. Uh, he said virtue, virtue raises them, right? So there's some kind of innate life force, power that lets these living things grow, right? Develop, etc., change, adapt, etc. Okay, so in general, the general case is this virtue or inherent power to live in all living things is what drives growth. It is about all the unique manifestations of life, the growth, and you can say change. Well, that different living things have different ways to evolve, that's to change, grow, change, and develop into the many diverse forms of life found in nature. Okay, now at the human level, okay, in addition to the above, it is about all the different ways we follow the Tao and express virtuous words and deeds. So that's the external side, right? Okay. That we have the inherent ability, not just to, you know, grow, adapt, change, develop, et cetera, et cetera. Like, like all living things, plants, animals, but we also have the ability to express words and deeds or virtuous words and deeds. Okay. So that's, that's the external part. Well, what makes it virtuous? It's based on our human nature. Uh, sorry, our uh, Buddha nature essence. Okay, but or it's the in accordance with. Okay, it'll be aligned with. Okay, so virtue is in the context of humans is the driving force that allows us to differentiate and diversify. Okay, so that's in the external. The point view is on the internal level. Virtue of the Tao is what sustains the growth of all living things. It's the inherent power to foster growth and development of all living things. So that's the inherent, there's some kind of inherent ability, nature, all right? Okay, so on the external level, especially with the humans, <clears throat> it's the virtues are the manifestations of our true selves to be in accordance with our Buddha nature in our thoughts, words, and deeds, okay? So that's the external aspect. Okay, let's go to the third phrase. <clears throat> which is things shape them. Okay, what are things? Okay, so basic meaning of third phrase, things in this context means all the living things in an environment or all, or, or all the people in a social situation. Okay, such as at a nature level, ecology, interacting facets of an ecosystem, other living things, and on the human level, various roles that people play in a given setting. Okay, so so all the things exert influence on one another, regardless of setting. So it's the interacting dynamics or interactions that shape living things in certain ways, okay? So it applies, this applies to all living things. That means on, on the more nature or grander scale, it's with respect to ecology, finding a niche to fit into there's a range of or spectrum of interacting dynamics which shape living things or human beings right so we find so many different species or you know types not types yeah families of animals or, or plants right within certain ecological or eco ecological environments right how they all fit 
okay, and interact with each other, right, in certain ways, okay, right? So, you know, you know we see that all of that be in the tropics, in the jungles, <clears throat> in the prairies, plains, mountain regions, desert regions, or, you know, in, in the oceans, right, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you know, be it in the shallow waters, be it in a lake ecosystem, or in a deep undersea ecosystem, et cetera, et cetera right? So, so you, you see all that, okay? Now, it's also, oops, it's also offensive and defensive mechanisms of, for survival, okay? So, so that's the dynamics I'm talking with these are things, right? So offensive, defense, mechanic, mechanic, me mechanisms of survival, that there's a plethora or plenty of, or many clever survival techniques, tricks, sorry, in nature, right? You know, how animals survive in, you know, stiff, in response to their environments, right? Like be in a desert environment, how animals, cons or even plants, conserve water. So if you look at the plants and animals in a desert environment, you know, how they survive in that type of environment that is, you know, lack of water, high, you know, temperature, et cetera, et cetera, versus animals that say survive in the polar regions, you know, very low temperature, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay. So humans also have different mechanisms for survival in different social interaction uh, situations also. And lastly, the confrontation or competition or fight or flight. Uh, you can say that's a mechanism too, but these all apply to animals as well as, an, as, well as humans, all right? So these are the, the things or the factors that affect or influence all living things, okay? All right, so further understanding is humans, as a human level, we're influenced by people around us, right, in various different ways, in the form of various interacting dynamics as well, right? You know, you have the parental relationship or familial relationship, then uh, relationship between friends, relationship in schools, right, teacher, students, that's a relationship between colleagues, co-workers, and then relations between neighbors and between other peoples in society, right? Within society, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So it's like, you know, what Confucius said about the five relationships, right, et cetera, okay? All right, let's go to the fourth phrase, which is forces perfect them. Hmm. Force, okay, yeah. Uh, so basic meaning is... Yeah, th this word means force, power, strength, okay, et cetera, all right? So that's what it means, uh, uh, basically, yes. <clears throat> so besides other things, people, such as people in the environment that influence living things, or us, people influence us, there are various forces in the environment which also affect living things, uh, humans included. So. Forces such as temperature, humidity, water, dryness, you know, wind. So these are all natural environmental uh, forces, okay? And then so faced with, with any particular environment, living things must adapt, which means they must perfect themselves in order to fit into the environment, right? So that's, that's what perfect themselves or complete. I mean, this word could also mean complete, achieve, accomplish establish okay so at the human level <clears throat> besides the environmental factors or forces we must also take into account other social factors you know be it politics economics social norms laws and regulations customs traditions etc cetera, etc cetera, right so so humans at a human level it's just another layer of complexity of, of you know forces or factors besides the environmental there's the social factors, political factors, economic factors, et cetera, et cetera. legal, uh, religious, traditional, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Or, yeah, cultural, okay, all right. Deeper understandings at the universal level, the Tao is the essence that is the source of all living things. The virtue is its countless functions or applications, right? Okay, <clears throat> the Tao essence gives rise to the natural laws and the applications of the natural laws is the virtue. So virtue is what sustains the growth of all living things. 
At the human level, the Tao is our Buddha nature essence within all sentient beings, and the virtue is the manifestation of the essence. Okay. <clears throat> so that on the external, you can look at it externally. That was the universal. Externally is <clears throat> just as all living things are shaped by other living things, humans are also influenced by other people in the environment. So all living things must adapt or perfect themselves to the forces of the environment. Humans also need to adapt to forces of the environment, both natural and social, in order to live and grow. The internal, we can say these life forces are the vitality, uh, the vigor or the spirit of consciousness, huin, and spirit of sense, pull, that allow the growth and development of all living things. Okay, so that was in chapter 10, Mystic Virtue. They talked about that in the very first line or sentence, phrase, okay? All right? Holding the soul, embracing the one, the soul, okay? So that's the virtue within, okay? So at the universal level, the Tao and its virtue is the most respected and noble. The human level, the most respected and honored in the world is Tao and virtue, okay? So the key is, all right, um, the Tao, which is the essence, okay, and its virtue is in all humans. So each human being has a conscience, right? That's that's an example, okay? You can say manifestation, okay? So this conscience is the essence, Tao essence. Okay, it's the Tao essence. And to act according to our conscience is the virtue, okay? So virtue means we need to act, okay, in accordance with our Buddha nature essence. So humans are the embodiment of the Tao, that's the essence, and the virtue, the function. Okay, so we have that two together, right? So that's the oneness. So on the external side, within this physical world, humans are shaped and influenced by other people and must also adapt to the forces of the natural and social environments as well. As well. So internally, it's the life forces are the vitality, the vigors, which allows growth and development of all living things. Okay, so let's go to summary. For, okay, so section one, your summary. Okay, we can summarize as follows. Hmm. Oops. Okay. Okay. That's better. Okay. So this is what Lao Tzu's, uh, you can say, perspective on what existence is, okay? So you have the concept, the mirror things, and the humans, how it applies, right, to all living things and then the humans. So when the Tao produces them, Tao is the source and the natural laws. That's the essence. And we come from the Tao and eventually return to it. Just the karma involved. Not only do we follow the natural laws, or biology, etc., but also we follow the laws of karma, the great circle of life. We talked about that in previous chapter, right? Especially chapter 50, right? The great circle of life. Virtue raises them, okay? So virtue is the life force that powers all living things, okay? So it's the function or applications of the natural laws, such as laws of biology in this case, right? So it's a life force okay so it's an inherent okay life force you're not taught that right we don't have to learn that okay so we are different though humans unique physically physically and mentally so virtue manifests within us in different ways internally externally okay so things shape them so all living things at the mirror things level all living things exert influence on one another. that's the group dynamics or the dynamic interactions within you know between different either animals, plants, etc. Okay. Whereas on the human level, we take on various roles. We influence and help one another. That's the group interactions, okay, group dynamics. Forces perfect them. So environmental factors exert influence on living things, right? Those natural factors, the you know, temperature, humidity, etc. Water, lack of water, whatever. Okay. Or you know, sunlight, no sunlight, whatever. Okay. So on the human level, we must live with adapt and adapt to constant change, both natural and social, right? So that's that's the human. It's another layer of complexity because we have the social factors. Okay. Now it 
just in this very first section, you know, Lao Tzu provide, provided a, like a model, okay, for, for us to view, you can say nature or view, yeah, view nature, view, view the world, if you will, uh, in, in a, in a certain perspective. Okay. So, so the first four faces, faces of this can serve as a model for everything we observe. For example, when, when he said Tao produces them, it's, yeah, it's, he's asking the question, well, we can ask the question. So how did everything begin? What was the source or genesis, right? So that's what this first phrase is talking about. And virtue raises them. So what drives it? What are the factors, variables that drives such a thing or something, right? So what are the force that push the, pushes it forward? And things shape them. So now this involves who, the who. The first is the how, second is what, then the third is the who are involved or which, which people play a primary role of influence or what, which things, okay, et cetera, all right? And then the last phrase, forces perfect them is once again, but what is, what are the variables involved? What are the factors, the uh, uh, influential things or forces or factors? Okay, so what are the internal and external forces at play? So that's, that's this first section, all right? So let's go to the second section. Okay, second section, all right. Therefore, the mirror things, all respect the Tao and value virtue. The respect for Tao, the value of virtue are not of a command or not due to a command, but to constant nature. Okay, so there's some contra concepts here. All right, okay. Basic meaning of first phrase is, you know, therefore mirror things, all respect of Tao and value. Okay. Um, okay. This line makes it clear that in the previous four phrases, you know, the them zi, refers to all living things, okay? Plants, animals, humans, okay? So this applies to the entire chapter for that word, okay? So basic meaning is, first line is li literally, none would fail to respect the Tao and value virtue. That's what literally this, this phrase is, okay? This phrase, okay? All right, all right. So, okay, literally that's what it means. But uh, another way of saying it is none would fail. Oh, yeah, okay. L none would fail to respect the Tao and virtue. Among all the mere things, none would fail to respect Tao and value virtue. Okay, so all living things respect the source of life. That's the Tao. And value their own lives. That's the virtue. Okay. Um, what does that mean? So Tao manifests as the natural laws of biology the source of all life. So all living things must respect, meaning, you know, you, you don't pay homage, doesn't mean that, in that. It just means to conform to, to be aligned with, to follow the natural laws of biology in this case, okay? So that all living things work with that, in order, that meaning the laws of biology, in order to continue the next generation, et cetera, right? They have to follow the laws of biology in order to, continue the species, right? Okay. And now value virtue. Okay. What's that virtue? Remember that's life force inherent in all living things or the vitalities, vigors, etc. Okay. Because all living things have that survival instinct where they value their lives and will fight to survive. Right. I mean, that's, that's all living things have that survival instinct, right? Animals, right? We see that all the time, right? Okay, humans too, right? So, all right, so, um, okay. So for humans now on the external level, similar to animals, we too respect life's force. That means we conform, we follow, okay, to the, the law of, you know, biology in this case, right? And value being alive, that's the virtue, okay? So the internal aspect is we must be in accord with, abide by, conform to, the Tao, that's the respect, okay? In order to thrive spiritually, that's the virtue, okay? So then, oh, sorry, to drive, sorry, I should be, a, I should have a cold, semicolon. Okay. So, and the virtue is to 
nurture, develop, and manifest our Buddha nature virtues. Okay, so let's look at part three of the summary. <clears throat> okay, what is the um, <clears throat> the respect for Tao and the virtue, uh, a varied virtue? Okay, so this often in Tao, we, we kind of like shorten this, okay, shorten that to basically saying respect the Tao and value virtues, okay? So now there are two layers of meaning, okay? The first, the first is that the Tao cultivator must regard the Tao with the highest esteem, okay? And hold virtue as the highest value. But the above is only meaningful, or this is only meaningful, if it is applied to everyday life that's manifested through one's thoughts, words, and actions, okay, or deeds, all right? So we do this, but it's but it has to be expressed in everyday life, right? Through our thoughts, words, and deeds. I'm sort of consistent. I'm sort of, we're in alignment, okay? All right, all right. Okay, now, also, an individual's worth, okay? That's the value, remember? It has nothing to do with wealth or power, but everything to do with Tao and virtue. That is, you respect the Tao that someone was able to exhibit or demonstrate, and you value the virtue this person is showing through words and actions, okay? So, so it has nothing to do with wealth and power, but it is that display, okay? Or we say that person is virtuous because they are in conformance you know, they respect the Tao, okay? That's what they're in conference. And they are in accordance with that inherent, remember that inherent power or whatever that, that we call virtue and also express it, right? So, so okay, express their Buddha nature essence in, in our case, okay? All right, so that's what that means. Okay, uh, let's go to the last phrase or the last line of section two. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, <clears throat> so the basic meaning of the second line is that uh, the second line is uh, the respect for uh, Tao, the value of virtue are not of command, but of their constant nature okay so the respect for Tao and value of virtue by living things are being are enforced and it flows naturally hmm, that's interesting okay so what is that because living things that want to proliferate and flourish must respect the Tao of life that is the every stage of biological reproduction okay so this is you know the, following the laws of nature or the law of biology in this case Okay, so living things give birth and naturally care for the newborn. They do not need a command to be that way, right? So, if, you know, we're talking about, like, say, animals, okay, <laughs> for example, especially, all right? Okay, they just have that, we say, instinct, right? Especially maternal instinct, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So further understand, the second line is living things that want to continue living or flourish or perfect must value their lives that is by acting on their survival instincts and fight if necessary. So no one needs to force them to do that. No one has ordered them to be that way, right? The Tao didn't order them, right? God didn't order them, right? So they are just that way on their own without being instructed. It is their inherent nature by virtue of that Tao, that inherent power that's given to them once when Tao gave rise to living things. Okay, now constant nature, okay, is the key to section two, right? Okay, to this section, all right, this constant nature. So what's this idea of constant nature, all right? Okay, so for all living things, including humans, it would be unnatural to disregard life, right? I mean, you know, maybe, okay, yeah, you know, amongst humans, maybe there are, you know, a small minority, you know, people who we say are suicidal, okay, you know, who don't, <laughs> don't value life or, you know, yeah, disregard life. But, okay, those are the exceptions, but, but that's because of karma. So it's not, you know, due to natural 
law or biological law. Okay, but so it is natural for us to respect, okay, the and value the basics of life, birth and growth. Okay, it would be strange or unnatural for living things to be any other way. Okay, so that's I'm talking about living things, especially animals. Okay. And humans. So the father-mother instincts or parental instincts are powerful drives for human beings. And children start out with a natural respect of the parent. Okay, so let's go to summary four. Okay. All right. And this is the respect for Tao, the value of virtue. That's another perspective. Okay. Ooh. I don't know why it goes like this. Okay. Oops. Oops, sorry. Oh, man. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so once again, we have the concept and then the myriad things and human beings. Now, respect to valuing the virtue. Okay. Myriad things, they protect themselves. Okay. Self -preserv preservation via survival instincts. Okay. So that's true for all living things. Okay. Including plants. Right. They have survival. In, well, we say instincts, I mean, they don't have instincts, but they don't have a mind, but they just, whatever little niche that they can find to survive, they'll survive, okay? Now, for the human beings, it's protecting what matters. That is, human beings have a higher level because we have this consciousness, right? Okay, uh, it, we can sacrifice oneself for others or for future generations. I mean, even animals to some degree, but anyway, okay, but, but at least humans have this ability. Okay, so that's why we're at the highest level, you can say, right, of all animals or sentient beings. Okay, so, right, so we're, we're, we, humans can not only protect what matters, you know, what, what's valuable, what they consider important, etc., but they also could sacrifice themselves for others, for the sake of others, right, you know, okay, and for future generations. Okay, so that's what now respecting the Tao for animals or living things parental instincts the nurturing the young right so all animals have that right you don't they don't need to be taught so that's built in nature okay built in nature so they respect the Tao, meaning they are in conformance or follow to the laws of biology in this case okay now for humans let's go one step further we have mutual love and support in the family now this can be distilled into this term called filial piety, right? So that's a separate topic. You know, uh, you know, you, you probably um, first encountered it in the Dharma class, but uh, it's it's a separate topic. Okay, so I don't want to go into it. And and filial piety, it's not a well. That's the the technical translation, but and it sounds very clinical, very abstract. You know, another actually the best. You know, the better way of uh, defining what shall means, it just means the love, care, respect of your parents. That's it. I mean, that, you know, that, that, I mean, that's a separate topic. But for humans, okay, to respect the Tao, th it's connected to filial piety. So that's why, you know, Confucius talked about it. Right or, or mentions, you know, about saying fetal piety is the highest level of reverence for the Tao. Okay, so so if you, for as a human, if we can follow filial piety or express or perform or set or practice filial piety at the highest level, then you are actually in alignment or in congruence with the Tao. Right? Remember, we say respect. It's to like to follow the Tao, to be in accord. So that's why all the Buddhas and saints emphasize, especially in terms of human practice, okay, filial piety is a, is a cornerstone, it's a foundation. So from, so that's why, so even Lao Tzu is talking about, but you know, in an indirect way, he didn't specifically say, oh, you know, you have to have filial piety to respect the Tao, okay? That's, but he indirectly hinted at that, okay? So that, you know, respecting Tao, 
filial piety is the foundation. That's why, you know, in the Tao, that's why in the Dharma class, we emphasize, you know, filial piety as, as, as the cornerstones of practice of the Tao, of, of respecting the Tao, following the Tao in conformance to the Tao, right? So, so if you can do filial piety well, then you're well on your way. You're at least halfway there, right? So, so that's that's the significance of filial piety. I mean, you know, just remember, filial piety means love, care, devotion, support, respect, etc. For your parents, okay. I mean, okay. So that's a separate topic. But but once again, I just want to link that. You know, how filial piety and respecting the Tao is is linked. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's go to that's bottom of page four. Okay, bottom of page four. All right, okay. Oop, no, no, no. Uh, middle of page four. Okay, so the higher understanding is that the Tao and the virtue are already within us. So that's at the human level. Okay, so just as we, so just, so just as we are able to know it deeply to recognize the true, to know it intimately, then we can transform ourselves. This will all be done naturally. Okay, all right. Okay, let's go to summary part five. Now we're talking about what's natural, okay? Nature, okay, what's nature? Okay, so nature, that's another important um, term, okay? As a matter of fact, we've encountered this term previously right, in I think at least three previous chapters, okay, so, and and we're going to encounter it again in the future, I believe, let's see, yeah, nature, okay, nature, yeah, we're going to encounter it one more time, okay, but, all right, so nature, okay, now nature, the, the Chinese word is very meaningful, very meaningful, okay, the, if you want to translate, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is translates nature, natural, nature, naturally, okay? But if you do literally, okay, literally it means self. This first word means self, okay? Self, it means self, zi means self, okay? And the second word means yes. I mean, so well, in, in today's modern usage, they don't use this word for yes, but in the old ancient usage, it means yes, or it means affirmation. You know, it's to affirm, okay, affirmation. Okay, but today we, we, you know, it's natural, natural, naturally. Okay, so this term nature appear first time, right, in this, in this chapter, right, 17 to know to have, okay. Now, in, in what context though? Okay, it's in a context of Task accomplished, matter settled. Okay, so that's the exact word. That's the last phrase, okay, or last line, okay, of chapter 17. Now, this line or phrase is in reference to the highest form of leadership where people were not even aware of the actions of the leader. So when something great that was accomplished, which benefited everyone, people would all say, we did it naturally. So that's what that context is in that chapter 17 of that last line okay now now that's 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 what it means okay but another way of saying is what the people really meant was here's it here it is is that they achieved great accomplishment by just being in accordance with that's the yes part in accordance with their own natural true selves so that's their own selves, okay? So that's what na natural means, or nature, okay? Naturally, in this case, okay? Since that's a ver adverb, okay? So where the people are, uh, where what people are, what the people are, what they want as a group and what abilities they have are the attributes of the self, right? Themselves. And to be in accordance with is the yes part the positive affirmation. Okay, so that's another way of interpreting this line in chapter 17, okay, another view, okay? Now, this term also appeared another time, or once again, in chapter 23, okay? First line, okay? In the context of what? In this case, 
It's in the context of the natural cadence or rhythm or cycle, if you will, of heavenly phenomena, right? So the first line in chapter 23 said, sparse, sparse speech is natural. The strong wind does not last all morning, okay? All right, so now what, what that line meant means on the superficial level is that it's in reference to the order, there's some order or sequence of natural phenomena where there is a beginning, a duration, and an end associated with all natural phenomena. That's okay, Lao Tzu was using natural to describe all, na all phenomena, all natural phenomena. That, yeah, there's a starting point, beginning, and then there's a duration, you know, it lasts you know, not all forever, but just for a certain duration, you know, it could be, you know, whatever you pick, it gets, it's, you know, it could be short, me long, etc. but it's, it's a duration and then it ends. Okay. So that he's talking about natural. Now what Lao Tzu, another way of interpreting or understanding this is that the weather it's always in this case, right? Natural phenomena, the weather, the wind, right? In this case, I mean, he had talked about the rain too, the second line, but that's the same, same idea. So that, that the weather is always being true. That's the yes part. That's the lan part to the characteristic of heaven itself. That's the self part. So another way of saying this, yeah, you know, winds don't last all morning. Rains don't last all day because that is its natural trait or that the weather is being true to the characteristic of itself. Okay, so that's another way of looking at it. All right, okay. Then the third time this term appeared, natural or nature, is in chapter 25. Okay, so what was it? Okay, chapter 25. In the last line, in the context of the Tao following the laws of nature. Hmm, that's interesting. I thought that people say Tao is everything. You know, it's not below the laws of nature. Well, that's how we say it, but we'll see what it means. Okay. So in the last line of chapter 25, it said, heaven follows the laws of Tao. Yeah, that's what it means. Or Tao follow. Oh, yeah, the last two lines or phrase. Heaven follows the laws of Tao and Tao follows the laws of nature. Hmm. Okay, so what does this mean? Is what context it is? Okay, it says this is in reference to the Tao nature or its intrinsic character, okay, characteristic trait. It's changeless, it's constant and eternal in that regard. Okay, so the Tao is changeless, it's constant, it's eternal, it's forever. Okay, that's what it means. Now, what Another way of saying is that the Tao is always true. That's the yes part, the Ran part, to itself, its own or its own nature. That's the self. That's its. Or the Tao is always in accordance with itself. That's the yes part and the self part. So that's what it means. So when we say Tao follows the laws of nature, it just means that the Tao is being its true self <laughs> that's another way of saying or being a coin if with its true nature okay being itself okay so that's what we mean saying by Tao follows nature okay it's not that it follows the laws of nature it just means that it's a natural reflection right it's of itself it just that's it natural reflection uh, you can say thusness yeah you can say thusness suchness all right okay so now, so we've seen this term nature or natural, naturally, in three previous chapters, 17, 23, and 25. So how does these tie back to the nature of ch this chapter, 51? All right, so in chapter 51, this term is used to describe the natural reverence or respect that merry things have for the down virtue, that it's not of a command, but to constant nature, right? That's that phrase. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> All right. So where mirrored things, living things, are naturally respectful and naturally regard virtue as valuable, which means the mirrored things are in alignment with, that's the, affirming, the affirmation, the yes part, 
in alignment with the characteristics of their essential selves. That's their self, the, the zi part, right? So zi ran, so that's what it means, okay? So the myriad livings are just being true to their own essence. Okay, now that's for all things. So now for humans, being natural, being in accordance, for, uh, being natural means being in accordance, that's the yes part, with your true nature, also known as our Buddha nature. That's our self, that's our true self. That's our essence, okay? So being natural means being in accordance with our true nature. So there's no need to pretend, no need to live up to an image of how you think other people see you, how you think the role you need to play. So, so remember this. So uh, Lao Tzu used the term natural in a very specific sense. That's here, okay? So when you hear people say, you know, I'm being natural when they are nasty, angry, mean, mad, etc. Because they say, hey, I'm being natural, being what? In accordance or <laughs> with human nature. That's human nature. Okay. So from Lao Tzu's perspective, that's not natural. Get it? Okay. Because your human nature is not the true essence. It's not your true self. It's the Buddha nature. That's the true self. Okay, that's the essence. That's the true essence. Human nature comes and go. Where's your human nature before you existed, right? Before you were born. And where does human nature go? Where will your human nature go after you die? Hey, where, where did it go? Where, where is it? It doesn't, it's not. So that's not the essence, right? It's not real, okay? Okay. Human nature is, is formed by other forces, right? By the previous force, you know, by the forces that we mentioned in, 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 in uh, section one. You know, all right, the forces, the environmental factors, the social factors, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, a part of it is also karmic, uh, you can say, uh, karmic remainder or, you know, you know, from previous lives, okay, whatever. But, but that's not your human nature. I mean, that's, sorry, that's not your true nature. The true nature is your Buddha nature. So when you say you are being natural to yourself, that means you have to be in accordance with your Buddha nature. So that's what Lao Tzu meant, okay, by being natural, okay? So, all right. So in this context of this chapter, when the mirror things, okay, all right, go with their own nature, their Tao, that's the way they are, would naturally respect the source of life, that's the Tao, and the va and value virtue, that's the life force with it. There's no need to force any of this. So this unforced way is the way of nature right so so it's just like chapter 25 when we say Tao follows the laws of nature right Tao just naturally what reflects itself or naturally being true to itself same idea okay that's at the grand level the Tao the over over all level but this is being uh, this we're talking about this being the human level right okay so the key is Lao Tzu, that's why Lao Tzu stress, you know, being natural, okay? Okay, so when you have natural in this kind, this is how you can, this is being applying to us now to human level, be relaxed and truly comfortable. So you're just yourself with no need for pretense, for facade, right? No need to be who you are not because there's stress involved with being who you are not, right? You have to pretend, right? You have to act, you have to, right? act, uh, be it like a pretender, okay? You're not being true to yourself, okay? So also, secondly, be at your best effortlessly. Like the cliche, just be yourself, which is so trite. There's still a kernel of truth, however. If you are able to, be, to relax, be comfortable, and be yourself, that is the best way to bring out the very best in you, right? So when you're relaxed, right? We see that now this Olympics, right? We see athletes, right? If they're all tense, nervous, worried, and certainly you not know, so much on their mind, they're not gonna be their best. They're not gonna do their best. They're not gonna perform their best, right? But if they are relaxed, their mind is clear, right? No, no, no nerves, right? No nervousness, right? No pretense, just being, their selves, right? Then they can do the best, right? So, so same idea, okay? So, 
That's that's what natural means. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. All right. Uh, okay. So now implication is. <clears throat> excuse me. Um. If we are able to naturally respect the Tao and value the virtue, we can teach others by our, by our own example. So the Tao is within us. We do not need to speak to others about the Tao. I mean, in the highest ideal sense, that is the case, right? That's the case. Unfortunately, people, you know, we're not, <laughs> you know, people are not that aware uh, so, you know, so they need to be taught, right? So that's how, okay. So we are using our bodies to manifest or perform the Tao or practice the Tao or just, yeah, just practice the Tao. This way people will admire, okay, yeah. So that's the highest level, okay? This is at the highest level because this is unforced, right? There's no, no need to force. We just display it naturally, okay? And there's no need to talk about it because, you know, talking has a lot of, words have a lot of, potential issues you know it could be is misinterpreted people may not understand so you have to talk more 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 you know so all right so that's okay but ultimately you know we don't need to just like uh thus have i heard right in all buddhist sutras right it started out with the buddha not speaking just you know going out to you know beg for food when it's time to eat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? All that, right? We talked about in previous chapters. Okay, so the key is <clears throat> without the need for any commands that thou gives rise to and by virtue raises all living things. So for all sentient beings to use, this is why all living things respect, meaning to follow, okay, conform to the source of life or the laws of nature okay and value its own life that is they all know how to survive right they all have that maternal instinct etc cetera, etc cetera, okay so the, for humans we must use our physical bodies to respect the Tao right yeah we have to display it right we have to use our physical bodies right right okay and value its virtues right yeah we have to right use our physical okay so to um, value that means to uh, be in conformance to display right the virtue the virtuous nature okay of our Buddha nature so we must expend the effort and not seek reciprocity that just means that yeah we don't seek recognition right we just do it naturally that another way of saying it's naturally okay so uh, now so we're this is the end of section two there's a PowerPoint um, that we talk about, okay, oops, okay, uh, let's see, okay, all right, oops, ah, uh, never mind, okay, all right, so it has the five parts, okay, or there are five boxes, okay, so there's the Tao on the upper left, and then there's the virtue, the inherent power on the upper right, okay, so both Tao now produces, so you see this arrow, it produces, gives rise to. Now, these arrows are all natural, okay, unforced, okay, natural, all right? Okay, okay, um, oops, okay, okay. Um, the virtue or the inherent power of the Tao raises and grows mere things, all right? So that includes animals, okay? So that's that one relationship here. Now, we also talk about in uh, phrase three of things sh shape them, right? That's here, that's the lower left, other entities, okay? That shape and influence. And this is natural, it's also natural. It's not a command or something, it's just the nat natural, you can say, interaction or relationship, okay? And then the fourth phrase is forces perfect them. That's here. That's the environmental factors. You can say external factors. They force adaptation of mirror things, right? So that's another natural, okay, unforced relationship, okay? So it's here, 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 natural. Tao naturally produces, gives rise to. 
the virtue naturally raises and grows all merry things. Now, in turn, section that's section one. Section two, right? It says all uh, uh, merry things respect the Tao and value the virtue. So respect. That's this line here that respect the source of life. That's they follow. They are in accordance with. All right, they're in alignment with the what the law of nature, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so that's what it means. You know. Okay, all right. Similarly, all mere things, and this is all natural. Why like we say it's naturally? That's a reflection, right, of its essence or its true self. Okay. All right. Same thing here with that. With uh, all mere things, value virtue, right? That is to value one's own life, right? Value that they are alive, and also value the fact that they have this maternal instinct, right? To raise others. I mean, that's right here. But they also value. They express it, right? By displaying what love. Right, support, care, etc. Okay, so that's also natural. So you, so it's a all these arrows or what? Well, well with, with, with mirror things. This is what harmony means. Okay, this is I, I, next. Well, not not next chapter, but in future. Even though next chapter is a little bit different. I mean, it's a little bit more specific. But um, next chapter will also pick up on some of this. Okay, but uh, but on a more specific case. But anyway, um, uh, what I'm going to say is that in future chapters, the the uh, it'll talk Lao Tzu will talk about harmony, and this, if you will, this 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 this, this diagram or whatever displays the harmonious in, in uh, interplay relationship between these variable these four factors or these four aspects, right? Okay, so. All right, with respect to mirror things. So this all is everything is done naturally. Okay, so that's what it means. All right. Okay. So, ooh. okay. All right. Okay. Let's. Uh, okay. Let's get back. Okay. Uh, let's get back to section three. Okay. So we're at section three. Okay. Section three. <clears throat> Okay, section three. Thus, Tao produces them, virtue raises them, grows them, educates them, perfects them, matures them, nourishes them, protects them. Remember that then means uh, merry things, okay? Right. <clears throat> okay. All right. Okay, so let's go down to page five. Okay, so basic meaning of the third phrase. Oh, okay, the operative version. Okay, so that's sorry. Basic meaning of the first two phrases is this is a repetition. Of the first two phrases of chapter ten for emphasis. Okay, right here. That's this. That's this. Okay. Okay. All right. So then another meaning of the first two phrases is for all living things, including humans, it would be unnatural to disregard life. Okay. And the parental instincts are powerful drives. Children start out with a natural respect. Okay. For parents, all right. So that's that's another way of saying, okay, of saying thou participant, okay. Another way, this is just emphasis from section from the previous section. Now the, the third phrase, <clears throat> which is, it grows them and educates them. Okay, so that's what it is. Okay, so by virtue of being alive, mirrored things grow and learn. Okay, where the environment is the teacher. Now that's for living things in general. At a human level, it's similar to the phrase "live and learn." As we live, we also learn not to repeat our own mistakes and the mistakes made, and the mistakes other people made. All right. So, so that's that's another way of saying. Okay. So 
Another meaning is we take this to the next level by using the mind, okay? The challenge is not just physical, but also mental. So both the physical and mental aspects are part of the curriculum of learning as we live, right? Live and Additional meaning is just as our body responds to physical challenges and becomes stronger, the same is true for the mental challenges which exercises our mind, right? So we live and learn, you know, both physically and mentally, okay? All right. And then the next phrase is perfects them, matures them. Okay. So meaning the fourth phrase is that the material world perfects mere things by completing their development. Okay. Because we are in this environment, we have learned how to survive. That's the perfection part. Okay. The, per the or the process of perfecting. Okay. And figure out how to avoid danger which is the learning and development experience, okay? So that's for all of us, okay? That's what perfects and matures, okay? We, you know, we bec become mature. We, we grow wiser, supposedly, or, you know, more knowledgeable, okay? Another meaning is whether for animals or humans, it is a maturing process from childhood to adulthood. So taken together, this phrase is about growing up, about maturing. For mere things in general, it's primarily about physical maturity, but humans is different, okay? So for humans, it's not just physical, but also mental and emotional maturity. Okay, now, uh, those, if, 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 you know, those of you who, who, you know, if you've looked up uh, this chapter, uh, depending on what version, there are two primary versions, okay? Now, and so in this phrase, unfortunately, there, there, there's a, different uh, text, okay, by the way, different word, just FYI, okay? So uh, in the ancient text, there's another version of this chapter, okay? Now, the version I'm following, okay, they, it uses the term perfects them, matures them. That's this, okay, that's this Chinese. Now, this version is from the Riverside Sage, He Sang Gong, who lived roughly 2,100 years ago during the Han Dynasty, okay? Um, that's, the most ancient version, okay? So that's his version, He San Gong's version, okay? We're, there's, there's a story about this, but, 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 but that's digressing. You guys can look it up. That's, you know, he's he's an interesting character too, okay, He San Gong. Anyway, he, he's a scholar, they say, and, and you know, there, there's a lot of, there's not much written about him, but, you know, I think Sima Qian did made a reference to him. So anyway, Sima Qian came much later. I think he's in the, later Han dynasty or, or the early, yeah, Tang dynasty, whatever. Okay, now, there's another version, okay? So, now, this other version is the characters are different, okay? The Chinese characters are different, okay? And he came from Wang Bi, okay? That's another scholar philosopher during the Three Kingdoms period. He also did, he, he edited various, basically, or he collected the different, you know, I guess, versions of the Tao Te Ching. And, and he sort of like, I don't want to say created, but he edited, he collected them, put them together, and he used this term, okay, this term, I mean, these four words instead of these four, okay? So the, diff the words are different, that they, and they mean literally very different. But uh, actually, the meaning is pretty much the same, okay, self. So, or the key, the meaning. Okay, so this is just FYI, you know, more information for you to know. Okay, so the characters are in, uh, in an ancient context that's different from modern usage. Now, the modern meaning of ting, that's this term, it means pavilion, <laughs> it means pavilion. But in ancient usage, it refers to, it's used to refer to a little girl that's grown up to be a woman. So that's the, you can say the growing up process, okay, if you will, you know, the perfection process, just like in this term, the perfecting process, okay? It means the growth, the growth and development, okay? Growth and development of a young girl, a little baby girl or young girl to become a grown up woman, okay? So that's the same, to become an adult, okay? All right, now, now the modern meaning, that, so that's ting, which is pavilion in, in modern definition, but, the, the second, the third word, he, 
It literally means poison. <laughs> but the ancient use is for maturity. It's, it's, it's a metaphor for maturity. Okay, as in the example, um, as an example of a fruit that has overripened and became rotten, like something poisonous. But the adjacent meaning is that something has overmature, overripened. That's mature. That reaches, you know, beyond maturity. You know, overmature. Okay. So that so the meaning is even though the words are different today in modern usage, but the meaning is the same. Just FYI. Okay. So so some of you may come across this these four words instead of these because they're different versions. Okay. By different editors are. Okay. All right. All right. Then the last phrase. Let's talk about last phrase. Okay, nature provide. Uh, last phrase means nourishes them and protects them. Okay, so nature provides the mere things with everything they need. That's the nourishing part, and provides shelters to protect them from the elements. That's the protection part. Okay, now for humans with modern science, we can we can understand even more. Okay, for example, there's gravity usually taken for granted, but essential for keeping the environment stable and prevent the atmosphere from escaping into space, right? So that's important. And the atmosphere protects us from the vacuum of space and allows us to breathe. It also shields us from radiation and meteorites, right? So, so that's what the Tao and virtue gives us, right? Tao produces and virtue raises them is that it also nourishes them and protects them. Okay, so, all right. So the implication is the Tao is nurturing, educating, perfecting, maturing, nourishing, and protecting all living things and humans. This state is all achieved naturally, okay? It's not done by a command or order, okay? Just the way it is, okay? That's the way nature is. That's how the Tao works, okay? So the key point is this, that the Tao produced mirror things and a world by which by its virtue nurtures, teaches, completes, matures, nourishes, and protects all mirrored living things, including humans. Okay, now we're at the last section. Okay, all right, okay. So, uh, I have 20 minutes, okay. Produces, but does not possess. Acts, but does not flaunt. Matures, but does not dominate. This is called mystic virtue, all right? So, yeah, this is the conclusion. And these are the very, the first three phrases are the very key concepts for this chapter. Or the key, you can say traits, or one of the key takeaways, okay? All right, so the basic meaning of the first phrase is that, this is a reference to the Tao itself. The most rare thing about the Tao is that it produces all things or the source of all things, but it does not try to be possessive of them. There's no feelings of being possessive or any other feelings, okay? So the Tao, even though Tao gave rise to everything, to, you know, the whole entire cosmos, to the world, to all living things, to humans, right? But it does not say, hey, I own you, right? Okay, it doesn't do that, all right? Okay, there's no such feelings, okay? It's just the way it is, okay? Naturally gives rise to everything. But at the human level, when people create something, though, and give or give rise to something. They may feel possessive of it. Yeah, it's mine, right? It's my invention, my creation, you know, uh, my intellectual property or whatever, okay? All right. They may want to exert some kind of control, right? That's why we have patent laws, copyright laws, et cetera, et cetera, right? I mean, that's more on a, you can say, practical use because you want to encourage, you know, innovation, et cetera, et cetera. So you give them copyrights, right? Patent rights, et cetera. Okay, all right. Um, unfortunately, it has a bad side effect too, okay? Becomes that it's my, my, mine. Okay, all right, all right, okay, all right. Um, emulating this characteristic of the Tao means letting go, relinquishing our desires of possessing things. When you have created something, it becomes a gift to the world, something to share, not for one individual to possess. Now, this is the high level, right? This is very high level. This is what we call the spiritual level, if you will, or you know, the level of the Tao or, or Buddha, right? Buddha talk about relinquishment, right? Or and there's a reason for this. It's because from the Tao perspective, Buddha's perspective, etc., is that if we 
possess, if we have this tendency or we stress or we emphasize possessing things, then it leads to what? Attachment, cleaning and then attachment, okay? Cleaning, that means you, you can't let it go, right? You can't let it go, right? You crave for it. Well, uh, cleaning is more than crave. Okay, it's it's a higher. It's a, it's even it's beyond craving. But anyway, craving is like a desire. But anyway, okay. So once you become attached to things, to forms, to objects, then we become very distant from our Buddha nature, right? From our true self. From that something that's that's abstract, something that's intangible, right? See, so that's that's why on a spiritual sense. You know, we have to relinquish. We should not possess. Whereas on a you know economic level, you can say practical level, yeah, you know, you know, you need to have some possession in order to survive. Okay, that may be true. Yeah, that that's true. But the problem is, you know, it could lead to you know undesired consequences. That is, you know, we end up being obsessed, being attached to things to material things to objects etc etc et okay and so so we have to be careful okay be mindful of that all right so further understanding is that a Tao cultivator can be creative without excessive attachment to the creation or desire to control it yeah we can right we can do that right okay so this is the first of the three characteristics describing mystic virtue okay so just remember that produces but does not possess okay so that's the first characteristic or trait you can say of what we call mystic virtue right that's the last phrase of this section okay all right so second phrase is what it says uh, acts but does not flaunt okay so it means the Tao does everything yet doesn't flaunt its achievements, right? Doesn't blow its horn, right? Doesn't, doesn't, right? It doesn't presume, right? It's not presumptuous, okay, of its achievements, okay? So the second phrase is, on the flip side though, humans, it is a very human quality or trait to want to show off when people achieve something, right? Yeah, hey, you know, you want to, right? You want to advertise, you want to show show off, right? Flaunt, right? Say, I mean, flaunt is kind of extreme, but anyway, but you know, you want to, sh you know, you know, let people know, you want to be recognized, right? Seeking recognition, right? Recognize, right? That, yeah, you know, achieve something. Unlike humans, the Tao is not capable of flaunting its achievements. It doesn't, it just does as it, does it without saying anything, okay? All right, okay, all right, okay. The additional meaning is, mm, okay. Um, emulating the Tao, in this case, okay, in this case means letting you, your, uh, uh, I knew I had a typo here, letting your work speak for itself, okay? That's to follow the Tao, that's really to, be in accordance with the Tao is that, yeah, you may have achieved something, but don't don't need to talk about it. Don't need to, you know, emphasize it. Just let the work, right, show itself, okay, speak for itself, okay? So a Tao cultivator takes action in order to make progress on meaningful tasks, not to draw attention. So whether people notice or fail to notice, it's not a significant concern, neither showing off nor sneaking around, right? So you also don't sneak around. You can say, oh yeah, you know, the Tao, you know, Tao and Buddha said, you know, we should relinquish, we should not seek fame or recognition. So I'm gonna sneak around and do things. No, that, that's that's bad too. <laughs> okay, that's the other extreme, okay? So you, can, you can't do that. You just, that's not natural, right? Because you already have an intent, right? A, the intent and a desire and a purpose, right? To say, hey, you know, I'm going to sneak around so as not to be recognized. Then that's not natural either, right? So, so the key is what natural, right? So that's another key concept of this chapter, all right? Okay. So note well, okay. So this, uh, let's this this is important, okay. So the real lessons of the Tao, as taught by the ancients, is not necessarily going with the flow, which is a more passive mindset. The original Tao is more oftentimes, it's oftentimes much more dynamic, much more a living essence, much more proactive. Do what you must do. Take on a mission. Go on a quest. Going with the flow is just a small aspect of that. Now, you could there are times when you need to go with the flow too. Okay. So 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 it's not one or the other. Okay. We have to be careful. So that's why we have, you know, because a lot of times, you know, some of the modern, I don't know, 
readers of the Tao Te Ching, they say, yeah, the Tao is being passive, right? The Wu Wei notion, the non, I don't know, non-action or, you know, you know, right? Now we know better, right? It's not non-action, right? It's, it's action, but without intent, without uh, agenda, right? Okay, without intent, without agenda, right? It's natural. So Wu Wei and natural is very closely linked. Okay, they're, they're linked. They're Wu Wei and natural. I mean, natural as I described it earlier, right? You know, in this chapter, right? Natural, okay? All right, so. Uh, okay, so further understanding is the Tao creates all things, nourishes all living things, allows them to grow and develop, but it does not claim credit for anything. It achieves all. But it is not, but it's not presumptuous. That means, uh, look at me, look at me, you know, flaunting, okay, or display. You can say display, okay, self display. But this is the second of the three characteristics describing, okay? So the, the second, the first is, right, produces but does not possess. The second one is acts or performs or, you know, does things but does not flaunt, okay? All right. Uh, let's see. The third phrase is what? Do, um, nurtures but does not dominate, okay? So the basic meaning of the third phrase is the Tao nurtures the mirrored, live, the mirrored things without need to dominate, okay? Another meaning is the Tao nurtures all and does not control anyone or anything, okay? So now that's at the, you know, these are all at the universal level, but then how about as, as parents at the human level? Okay, so here, as humans, okay, humans, as parents, right, we nurture our children, we raise them up, right, right, we, we, we you know, we, 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 we give birth to them, and then we raise them up, right, we, we, okay, so we nurture our children, but we don't control them, we can make suggestions for reference, but they themselves have to make the final decision, right? Okay, ultimately, that's what it comes down to, right? So you've heard of stories of tiger moms, you know, controlling freaks, you know, parents who are very controlling. Well, guess what? It all, a lot of times, not, maybe not every case, but, but vast majority, probably 90 plus percent of the time, it doesn't end up with the result that the parents wanted for their children, right? Ultimately, it's still up to the children to decide what they wanted to do in, when they grow up, right? What they want to be, right? Et cetera. What career they want to choose or even ultimately, you know, which spouse they choose, right? To marry, to settle down, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, so, so it's all that, all right? So ultimately, you know, parents still cannot control their children, right? Ultimately, the children have to make them, okay? And that's the way it is, okay? All right, all right, okay. So, Further understanding is this, here it is, okay, is that this quality, think of this quality, okay, of nurturing but does not dominate, okay? It's like a river which winds its way across the land. The water of the river nourishes and nurtures all living things that it comes across. And after this, nur after this nurturing, the water of the river moves on without a word. It does not stay around to dominate things. It does not demand obedience or worship from the living things that it had nourished. So the Tao is just like that. So remember previous chapters, chapter 8, I think chapter 28, okay? Be like water, right? The river, the water course of the valley, right? The valley, the right? Okay? So, so the Tao is like that. So this is the third of the three characteristics describing mystic virtue okay we're almost there okay we're at the last phrase okay the last phrase is this these qualities of the Tao this above three remember right produce but does not uh, does not possess acts but does not flaunt nurtures but does not dominate okay these three qualities are difficult to understand by people so it is called mystic virtue does not mean dark Virtue. Okay, mystic can also mean dark. The, this word, this word. Okay, could mean dark, obscure, dark. Okay, but 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 that's not that's not what it means here. Okay, okay, it could mean abstruse. Yeah, that's difficult to understand. Esoteric, deep, profound, mysterious, mystical. It's it's more in line with this. Okay, and, and why? It's called because it's not easy to understand. 
okay? Because these virtues are so unlike our human nature. It's like, hey, you know, I, I never hear, you know, I can't believe something could be like that, right? So anyway, okay. So generally, okay, okay, I'm near the end here, appendix, okay, here. Generally, when people create things, do things, nurture things, that is usually followed by attempts to be possessive, to flaunt, to dominate, right? When we create things, we tend to be possessive. When we do things, we tend to boast or flaunt it. And when we nurture things, we tend to dominate or be in control. We want to be in control, right? So unlike the Tao, which makes no such attempts. So this is the part that is, quote unquote, difficult to understand about the Tao, because it is not what most people do. That is why it is the mystic virtue. Okay, so now let's go to Appendix A for comparison. This should be the last, hopefully. Yeah, okay, here it is, Appendix. Just one more summary. Okay, hold on. Appendix, mystic virtue, mystical virtue, uh, mystical virtue, mystic virtue, uh, same thing. Uh, maybe mystic virtue is better. Okay, mystic virtue. All right, okay. So this term, by the way, first appeared in chapter 10. Okay, as the last two phrases, or words of the, sorry, last two words of the phrase, this is way shanda, okay? So the last, oops, the last four phrases of, if you notice, I mean, you guys bother to look it up, of chapter 10, do you know that it's identical, in Chinese anyway, to chapter 51, okay? It's right here, it's all right here, okay? All right, okay? but. The translation is a little bit different, but that's okay because it's it's basically the same same meaning. It's just that see, so in the English and okay in Chinese it's the same, but in English when we read the Tao Te Ching, we have to be mindful. That's why you know it's good when you read the chapter or after going to the chapter understanding, you know, to, to prove to indicate, and that's an indicator, if you, whether or not you truly understand the chapter or not, you should be able to paraphrase it in your own words. And you could use some different words, okay? I mean, you know, nuances, that's okay. But that's a proof or indication of how, how much you understand, okay? Or how much you know about the chapter, all right? So, so, so you should try that out yourself. Whenever you, especially when you're reading sutras, okay? You know, in Buddha Sutras, in you know, the Tao Te Ching, and, and also in the four books, okay? So, so, so you should be able to paraphrase. If you can paraphrase well, then that means you really understood it, okay? If you can't, well, then that means your understanding is still superficial at best, okay? All right, so bearing without possession is the same as produces but does not possess, right? So achieving without arrogance acts but does not flaunt. It's the same thing, it's, uh, okay? Raising without domination, nurtures but does not dominate. Okay, same idea. Okay, same thing. So you can use different. Okay, so in chapter fifty-one, we have the exact same words. Okay, that also appears. Okay, all right. So, all right. Let's go to. I want to finish up. Okay. Uh, okay. So deeper understanding is, although the Tao produced everything, but it does not own anything. Although we create things, but do not possess a dominant thing dominate them. It is like we are all equal to each other. There's no difference. There's no dif it is not easy to achieve. That's why it's difficult. So to produce everything and not own them is the most difficult to achieve from a human level, right? Because when we create something, we, you know, we, we have this, I don't know, it's a natural tendency to, to possess it, to own it, say, hey, it's mine. Yeah, it's my idea. It's my creation. It's my et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Okay. So unfortunately, it's you know, that's the way, you know, we're brought up, right? That's due to mainly social influence. Now, there are societies who don't do that. Like the ancient Native Americans, same idea. They don't have a concept of ownership. To them, you know, the land is for anybody living in them to make use of. So when the first Europeans arrive, they say, oh, you know, I want to purchase this land that you are living here, I want to, or whatever, I want to purchase this plot. No, I want to purchase Manhattan Island. The Native Americans don't understand that concept. You know, hey, you own this land, you own this, this, this property, this, you own part of this world. They don't understand that concept, 
you know, by the way, okay, that's, that's, that's why the Native Americans, I mean, yes, they live on their tribal lands and they, they, they will protect them, but that's because more of survival that you, you know, you know, come and invade and, you know, take over. So that's a different story. But they still don't think, that, they don't say to each other, say, hey, this is my land, you know, not yours. Okay, so it's very interesting. A lot, a lot of ancient Native societies have that concept which is more when you look at it it's more in alignment with the Tao okay <laughs> yeah than the quote unquote more civilized advanced or developed you know cultures or civilizations okay so it's kind of ironic okay all right so um the Tao is the ultimate virtue that we can appreciate all its accomplishments oh same thing too. uh wait 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 okay sorry uh I, I missed something okay for humans sorry for hum uh, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Higher understanding. I missed something. Okay, one good point here. Although the Tao nurtures and nur nur nourishes all living things, it does not claim them as merits. For humans, this means the entire focus is on the process of doing something right, not for display to other people, not to be presumptuous. The Tao provides everything to all living things, but it moves on without a word. It does all this without controlling anything or anyone. So as parents, we raise the children, but do not control them. Okay, identification is this. The Tao is the ultimate virtue, ultimate virtue, that we can appreciate all its accomplishments, but not fully understand it, right? It's still sometimes like, hey, you know, how can it be like this? You know, how can it be such like? So these are the three qualities of mystic virtue. The Tao produces all, one, the Tao produces all living things of possession. Two, it accomplishes all without any arrogance. Three, it nurtures all living things without domination. These three factors are also within humans because the Tao, that is the Buddha nature essence, is within all human beings. Okay, so see chapter, see part six, last, last, here it is, last. Oops. Yeah, okay, how do we incorporate mystic virtue in your life? Okay, the Shenda. Right? We have to, to, we have the essence, but we have to also display or, you know, apply mystic, the virtue in our life. Okay, so one, create without the need to possess. What is truly yours can never be taken away. Be, be mindful of that. Yeah, just because I create something, right? Don't create, uh, sorry, don't try to possess the creation, the object or the idea or thing, right? That's not the most important possession. That's not the most important. We tend to, unfortunately, th that's the way society, you know, emphasizes it because it's mainly for economic, economic, because it's this idea, this product, right? This creation, music, be it music, be it, you know, a work of art, be it a novel, a writing, whatever, a machine, uh, 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 whatever, an invention, whatever, okay? That has economic value, unfortunately, from society's point of view, right? Right? Economically, okay? But that's not the most valuable from the Tao part or from Buddha's perspective. What is truly yours cannot be taken away. It's not that creation. No, it's the creator. It's, it's you. It's you have that ability to create. That's the most valuable. That cannot be taken away, right? You cannot take that away, right? Nobody can possess that. Right, so that's more important. So you can tap into the unlimited source. That's what's truly valuable. Okay, that's the creator. Okay, that's who creates or the inventor, whatever. Okay, it's a Buddha nature essence. Okay, that that is unlimited. Okay, all right. So to take actions without the need to flaunt. Why? Because we should understand that flaunting or boasting or self-display or presumption is driven by egocentric desperation. You know, we, we want attention, etc. We want recognition, fame, whatever. Okay. So that's all ego. And the doubts are not lasting either, right? So that's not permanent either, right? So let recognition happen naturally. Okay, uh, uh, the flip side is don't try to shy away either. I mean, that, that's because that's also the other, that, that's dualistic. Okay, so that's no good, right? So, so just let things happen naturally. And third is nurture without the need to dominate. It's to what? We should just provide mentoring, assistance and support. As parents, we support, we mentor, teach, right? That's like a form of type of teaching. Assist and support our children as they're growing up and let them, choose, make their decisions, whatever that, you know, 
their interests may be, their passions may be, whatever. We should just, we should not, what? Force our <laughs> ideas of, I don't know, success or whatever recognition on them, because then that's a form of control, right? And that that's dominance, right? And that's not natural either, okay? So let go of the need to control or interfere, all right? So that's, that's really to go with the flow, okay? That's what going with the flow, okay? All right, is, okay? All right, all right. So we're almost there with the last paragraph or so. Okay, so the key point. Here's the conclusion. I have a little over there. Okay, so the key is this. Okay. The Tao is the ultimate virtue because... So, so remember at the beginning, right? We separate the two. We say the Tao creates things and then and the, the Tao produces things and then virtue raises them. Oh, now it's combined. It's now merging into one. That Tao is the ultimate virtue because one, it produces all living things but does not claim possession. Two, it acts but does not show off. Three, it sustains all things but does not dominate. These three characteristics of Tao also apply to humans because the Tao is within all humans. So these are the principles to live by as we just saw in summaries. Part six, okay? Where, now here's the conclusion, is where this mysterious virtue that we manifest from the Tao is so marvelous and profound, where this mysterious virtue is not easy to achieve, where we can appreciate and apply this mysterious virtue without fully understanding it. That's okay. We may not fully understand, but you can naturally still display and apply, uh, appreciate and apply. That's about. Where this virtue is the mystery of mysteries, that's chapter one, right? This is the ultimate virtue of Tao. This is called the mystical virtue. This is the respect for Tao and value of virtue, okay? All right, okay, so this concludes this chapter. Uh, I went a little over five minutes. That's okay, 90 minutes. Uh, so uh, I like to uh, thank the grace of heaven and the virtue of masters for giving this opportunity to talk about this chapter. And if there are things that I did not say correctly, I ask for the Buddhas and Lao Tzu's understanding and forgiveness and your assistance. Okay, thank you, everybody.